name is Sophia Prado Irwin, and I'm a doctoral student here at the Museum of Comparative Zoology at Harvard University. And I study the ecology and evolution of anolis lizards. I'm broadly interested in many biological topics, including everything from physiology to behavior to conservation, but all within the context of my true love, which is herpetology. And that is a study of amphibians and reptiles. I do some of my work in the field where I measure and observe animals in their natural habitats, but I also use museum specimens in my research as well. Museums collect and preserve specimens and keep them in a safe location for use in ongoing as well as future projects. The MCZ, our museum, even has specimens that date back to the 1800s. These specimens are valuable for anyone who's interested in researching biodiversity on our planet. As a herpetologist, I of course love snakes as well as lizards. Now everyone knows what a snake is, right? They're long, scaly, limbless, pretty easy. Well, to get into a little bit more about what makes a snake a snake, let's go take a look at some live animals at the Museum of Science. I am here with Liz Logan, assistant right. curator. She's going to help us look at some live animals today so we can explore the differences between snakes and not snakes. So let's take a look at our first specimen. This is a desert rosy boa, sort of a typical snake. You can see it's very long, uh, very scaly, and legless, some of the traits that we commonly think of defining a snake. So now let's take a look at our second specimen. But actually, you might be surprised to know, this is not a snake. This is a lizard, a type of lizard called the glass lizard. You can see some similarities. It is also very long, skinny, scaly, and has no legs. But it's actually not a snake. Now we're going to take a closer look at how we can tell whether an animal is a snake or a fake. So the first trait that we can use to distinguish lizards versus snakes is that snakes actually don't have a movable eyelid while lizards do. So if you can see on this rosy boa, she has a very round eye and there's no structures around that, so she actually doesn't have any form of eyelid. By contrast, on this glass lizard, its eye is a bit more of an oval shape. She also has a, a bit of a ridge above the eye and actually has a real eyelid, so she can blink while a snake cannot blink. Another trait that distinguishes lizards from snakes, if we take a close look at the belly scales of this rosy boa, you can see that the belly scales are very long. They cross the entire body. By contrast, if you take a look at the belly of this glass lizard, you'll see that the scales are much smaller and they're uniform across the belly and the whole body. Another difference that can distinguish lizards from snakes is the presence of an external ear opening. As you can see on this glass lizard, if you follow the line of the, of the mouth, you can actually see this external ear opening about right here. It's a little hole where that contains her ear. So she's able to hear through that hole. Snakes, however, don't have an ear opening. And you can look in a similar spot on the snake here, and you'll see that it's just smooth scales, no hole. This doesn't mean that snakes are deaf, however. They do have an inner ear mechanism, so they're able to hear sound vibrations, although they might sometimes hear at a different or a lower frequency than lizards. So another feature that we can use to distinguish lizards from snakes is to compare the tail length to the body length. In lizards, the tail is often much longer compared to snakes. The way that we can tell where the tail starts is by finding the cloaca. The cloaca is an opening on the bottom or the belly side of the animal that they use to excrete waste, among other functions. So if we take a look here, you can see that the cloaca is about right here, and that means everything past this point is part of the tail. You can see that this tail length makes up about half or even maybe a little over half of the body proportion of this animal. By contrast, let's take a look at the boa. You can see Liz is pointing here to the cloaca on the boa. And what you can see is that there's much less room past that that constitutes the tail. Essentially, the tail is just this little short part which is a much smaller portion of the overall body in the snake. So speaking of tails, an interesting fact about the glass lizard and many other lizards is that they can actually drop their tails. This has evolved as a response to predation. So they're able to escape predators by just breaking off a piece of their tail rather than being consumed whole. Is this something that you worry about in your everyday care of these guys, Liz? Yes, we are very careful with our handling to ensure that they do not drop their tails because it's not fun for the lizard. So we've been focusing up to this point on features that you can see with your naked eye, but there's also lots of other features that we can't see that distinguish snakes and lizards too. One example of that is the anatomy of the skull, and this has to do with the way that these animals feed. As you may know, snakes can consume prey that's much larger than the size of their head. 
So how are they able to do that? Their skull is actually structured quite differently from a lizard. They have lighter bones, and importantly, their lower jaw, or what's called the mandible, is not connected in the front, so they're able to open it wide. So why exactly is it that these different animals look so similar? Well, to dig into that, we're going to head back to the Museum of Comparative Zoology and look more in depth at some specimens there. But for now, thank you, Liz, for taking the time and sharing your wonderful animals with us. You're very welcome. So why do these animals appear so similar? Well, looking at this phylogeny, or family tree, we can see that both the snake and the legless lizard evolved from a scaly lizard-like ancestor millions of years ago. Even though they belong to two different groups, snakes and lizards, together they're part of a larger group called squamata, which refers to their scaliness. Over millions of years, both the glass lizard and the snake have evolved to become limbless, so they closely resemble each other. This is an example of convergent evolution. Through natural selection, organisms that aren't closely related can evolve similar traits as they adapt to their different environments over many generations, leading to animals that look very similar today. We can actually see evidence in some modern snakes that their ancestors had limbs. Let's take a look at this ball python specimen, for example. Here's our preserved snake. Just to orient you, the head is over here, tail is here, and you can actually see this little bony spur. And this is a vestigial, or leftover, limb. So we can actually see this a little better on this partial skeleton. So this is the spine of a python. You can see here, this was the spur that we just saw, and this is the rest of the leg bones that are still present, that are actually inside the snake. Besides a glass lizard, there are many other snake lookalikes as well. The first specimen we're going to look at is this scaly foot lizard. It looks pretty much like a snake, but it actually has its own little vestigial limbs that are non-functional and only appear as flaps on the side. As another example, let's take a look at this Mexican mole lizard. While the previous lizard I showed you has only hind limbs, this lizard actually only has front limbs and no hind limbs. And you can see that here. Here's this little head, and here's the two front limbs. And the rest of the body has no other limbs. So we can see that within lizards, there's a lot of variation in the degree of limblessness. There are other legless animals that look pretty similar, but are actually not even reptiles. For example, let's take a look at this Sicilian specimen. Sicilians are a kind of amphibian, more closely related to salamanders and frogs than anything else. But when we look at it, you can see it looks superficially like a snake. Also long, also legless. But if you look closely, you'll see that these guys don't even have scales. Instead, they have these ring-like folds around the body. These tend to be burrowing animals, and they're rarely seen by the average person. Now that you've learned how to tell whether an animal is a snake or a fake, you'll be using your own herpetology detective skills. To do this, you'll be looking at some of the research specimens from the Museum of Comparative Zoology. In the past, using these specimens meant traveling to a museum and examining them in person. But now, with modern computer advancements, the images and information associated with these specimens is available online for anyone to use. For example, I can open a page for an animal I'm interested in. So once you access the page, you'll find lots of information. The scientific name, which is written in Latin. You'll find the museum ID number, which is how we keep track of specimens and how you will access the pages you'll use for this activity. You'll see where the specimen was collected, when it was collected, and by whom. And you'll find photos of the specimens that you'll be examining. And you can click on these photos to move them around and enlarge them. Using the chart that you created while watching the video, you'll now look at some of the research specimens and make your own observations to decide, is this a snake?